Hier stand tot afscheid weer de broers in troon bijeen geschaard. We're here at the Burns Monument, from which you can see most of Edinburgh, including the Scottish Parliament in Holyrood and the old Royal High School, which would have been the seat of Scottish Parliament had devolution been achieved in 1979 by referendum. So it's a very interesting historical environment and represents in many ways ideas of government and democracy. And standing here with the Nigerian artist Emeka Ogbo in February 2020, he was remembering that just 12 days earlier, as the UK bid farewell to the European Union and Brussels, MEPs had stood, held hands and sung Old Lang Syne, which is a song attributed to Robbie Burns. And essentially in that moment, Emeka Ogbo conceived a song of the union. Over the next year and a half, Colleagues at Talbot Rice Gallery worked with Emeka Ogbo to find singers here in Scotland who have come from the now 27 member states of the European Union and they've worked with us to make recordings of them singing Auld Lang Syne in their mother tongue, which is what you'll experience in a sonic artwork of Emeka Ogbo when you visit the Burns Monument. You know, we're going to record it in the EU languages, right? And um synchronize everything that it could perform like a choir and at the same time perform individually you know so the way we're going to set up the algorithm it will be such a way that you know you can hear everyone sing at some time uh, different people sing at some times and individual and when you think about it it's also the concept of uh unity and strength and uh being together and also mm -hmm. being uh separate because that is also what the eu feels like sometimes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this Ort Lang Syne singing, but a lot of other things also, um, we are trying to engage, I think, in a different way. Because politics, in the end, is also deeply emotional and deeply personal. It is not just something, you know, people don't think I want to pay less taxes and this is why I vote for this party. Obviously, that plays a role, but it's not the only thing that makes people be political in a certain way. It's a lot of different aspects and their arts and culture are absolutely crucial because to explain certain things to people, you just need to have a different language, a different way of interaction. And that's what arts and culture can bring. I love singing. I sing all the time. And I think the singing with other people is, is so special. It's like vibing in the same <laughs> same frequency when you when you sing together. So yeah, it's, it's really important for me. I'm definitely excited about uh, hearing the outcome of this because I've been in this country for about 16 years, like near, near 16 years, and I really lo love it here. It made me feel Scottish. <laughs> it's a chance to be part of something that will actually be a piece of work that very much expresses my own personal experience of being in Scotland and here in Edinburgh. I hope people will be inspired to, to sing together no matter what language. It was a very healing experience for me in the context of pandemic as well and in the context of Brexit as an individual and as a citizen of the world. I think it is a statement that beyond struggles, challenges, beyond economical and political changes, there is something that unites us. I think it's an absolutely lovely song. It's got this sadness, but also this statement about the passing of time that must not undermine friendship. Being part of this project, it really felt like a nice way to unite us all. You know, we all live here in the UK and most Europeans didn't get a vote, you know, when we were when the referendum came. I, as an Irish person, did get a vote, but it was nice to be part of this kind of project that gives everybody a voice when they didn't have one. I sometimes feel like a stranger in a country that I've lived in for over 35 years. My parents are actually from Zimbabwe and they moved here and they decided to put me through Gaelic medium education just because they wanted me to be part of the Scottish culture. So language has been a big part of my life, so it's really cool to be able to be part of something where we're bringing them all together through song. Like, I love that. I love the idea of that. Having 
heard it for, for the first, uh, first time in the context of the project, I felt really moved because this was like Scotland reaching out and kind of holding or maintaining a connection uh, with Europe after the connection was broken. I think Slovak language can be very poetic and emotional and I did the translation and I tried to add poetic words to it. I just think it added a little bit of my culture to the song, which I'm happy about. We can make music together and we can produce something beautiful and just because something is in different languages doesn't mean it's different. It's still got the same sentiment. So the music speaks and the music is the language that is international in that case. For me, creating this composition of how different languages could synchronize to sing in the same tempo and the same beat and, you know, like most likely by the time anyone comes to visit the installation, you may not even be hearing it as different languages, but like it's, it's just going to be uh, all alongside in your head, you know, like it's, that's what will, you, you, you will not even try to separate it. You know, you're not going to chop it into bits, oh, this is from me. No, it's just really like this is a song in your head, playing in your head, and that's what it's, it's all going to be. In many ways, what Emika Ogbo has essentially created here is a monument within a monument. It's a memorial to solidarity, friendship, and the overcoming of borders between us all.